Good evening. I'm also joined by uh, Troy Woodwick. Troy is uh, with Security Educational Consultants, uh, was with us uh, during one of the individuals that um, conducted the safety and security assessments of our buildings uh, earlier this fall um, and will join me at some point here in the presentation. Uh, for those in the audience, I want to caution you, when I did this with the board a couple weeks ago, it was two and a half hours. I'm going to try and cut it down. You look at me, I'm serious. Two and a half. Uh, but we're going to try and cut it down. Uh, safety and security obviously is uh, uh, paramount uh, not only to who we are and what we're about in addition to uh, educating our young people, but uh, I tried to come up with an overarching me message for tonight, which is, as a district, we have very strong safety and security measures in place, but this is an area that we can no longer take for granted and maintain the status quo. And whether it's things that are happening in our district or in other districts around us or across the country, uh, we need to take the opportunity to constantly be reviewing um, what it is we have in place and how to further strengthen uh, those measures. Our objectives for tonight are to provide an overview of the current safety and security measures, uh, to review grants that we received related to uh, safety and security. You'll see it was over a million dollars, uh, and to outline some of our next steps, and certainly to uh, cover some uh, questions and answers. Things that we will review in the process, we have a safety advisory team. We're going to cover uh, a good number of this current safety and security measures that we do have in place. Uh, please understand in some areas we may not be sharing uh, exact specifics because those may uh, either highlight a potential vulnerability or uh, compromise some uh, safety aspects. So um, again, we're, we want to share information, but uh, we may be judicious about some of it. We want to talk about an annual safety check that we implemented this year. Again, the school safety grants. Uh, critical incident mapping, uh, which is a new technology that's coming out. Uh, Mr. Woodwick will talk about uh, our involvement with SEC and then our implementation plan uh, and next steps going forward. Uh, the safety advisory team, uh, when, when I came into the district, I believe this team was mostly just administrators. Um, and what you'll see uh, now is we have enlarged this team uh, to include not only administrators, but we have folks from all the departments throughout the district, from <coughs> operations to transportation, uh, teaching staff, uh, administrators, food service, uh, local um, police officers uh, from both Oakland County as well as the South Lion Police Department. So, um, and then again, uh, Mr. Woodwick uh, and Dave Pass from SEC uh, are serving as consultants on this group. Uh, in addition to, and our initial work was probably on some of the policies and procedures and some of the, uh, what I'll say, uh, barriers or hardening uh, factors around safety and security. Uh, the folks with asterisks, we've also added school social workers and psychologists uh, to this because in the case of an actual uh, critical incident, um, it's not only dealing with the crisis, but then the fallout from the crisis and making sure that our families and our staff and our students uh, are supported and we have things in place um, appropriately. This has been a, a wonderful group uh, to work with. Uh, our current safety measures, again, I talked about the safety advisory team. You're all aware of the emergency management plan manual that we have that covers uh, a large number of uh, possible emergency incidents. and the specific directions and things that we can follow. Uh, we have to update this annually, I'm sorry, every two years with law enforcement. So you'll, it'll be coming back before you uh, this coming December uh, for uh, a review and approval. Uh, an annual safety check, I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit, so I won't spend any time on it now. Uh, we do annual ALICE review and tabletop, tabletop exercises with staff uh, and with uh, law enforcement throughout the course of the year. Uh, we do extensive reviews of our practice and our safety procedures uh, with students, with staff. Um, uh, we have in all of our buildings secure entryways, so 
with the exceptions of short periods of time during the day during perhaps arrival and dismissal uh, requires either a key uh, or a fob uh, to be able to enter uh, into our building and we're typically folks entering the building are restricted to a single point of, of entry. Uh, controlled entrances at that single point of entry, um, you know, most folks are, are there, they're on a camera, they're showing their ID, uh, and then we're allow, allowed in um, using an electronic latch to unlock the door. Secure vestibules in several of our uh, facilities uh, this allows the individual to come into a building and then before into a vestibule and before they can come into the main building uh, they come into the office um, and are cleared and then permitted to uh, access the building so again we have this in several locations uh, adding it to to others uh, we do have security glass uh, implemented in all of our buildings throughout the district this is one of those areas where we're not going to share the specifics in terms of maps and locations of of where it is but um, that's something that what the district added i believe back between uh, 2015 and, and 2018 um, we, we could add more in the future um, nor will i talk about the uh, resistant strength of the particular glass but it is there for a uh, for a purpose obviously we have surveillance cameras um, in our secondary buildings, indoors and outdoors, at our elementary schools, they're outdoors. Uh, through our grant funding, we'll be looking to add additional surveillance cameras. Uh, Building-wide alert systems, so through single point locations in the district, um, we could put the entire building in a lockdown, uh, which includes an audible uh, announcement. Uh, we can also, from a single location within the building, uh, disengage all of or engage all of the doors so that the key fobs uh, unless except for some of us don't allow you to enter into the building that would be a situation where for example if we had a real a crisis going on inside the building and we don't want someone to inadvertently enter into the building um, so that would prevent their badge from allowing them to get in and allow them to be to remain outside uh, public address the system from all the district telephones uh, all of our staff can make an all call, so anyone can put us in a lockdown if circumstances warrant uh, or if there's a, a, an announcement that needs to be made throughout uh, the entire building um, with the proper keystrokes on their telephone, um, they can do that. And um, we have the directions uh, by all the phones, and, and we do ask people to practice that uh, each year. Uh, okay, additional safety measures. We have thumb locks. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Night lock. We installed those this year. I'll talk about that in a little bit. E911. Uh, so now, uh, prior to this, we call 911, and it might say South Lion Community Schools, and it provides the uh, first responders real no specific specific information as to where the call is coming from. Now with E911. It locates it right down to if you're calling from a district phone, email or the notification is right down to the specific classroom uh, or the area in which the call was made. Uh, counselors, currently we have 11 counselors in the district, 12 gen ed, and 10 special ed social workers, uh, 3.6 uh, school psychologists. Again, a good number of folks, some we've added in the last uh, couple of years to help. Uh, provide support to our students. Uh, we have administrators, counselors, uh, school social workers, and school psychologists trained in uh, the comprehensive threat assessment model called CSTAG. So we go through this model. It's a multidisciplinary approach developed by uh, Dewey Cornell uh, in response to the shootings in, in um, Virginia Tech. Um, it is a research-based uh, model and that we use this model to uh, process threats um, and then to also gauge the appropriate response to those behaviors as well as then any proactive measures um, that we need to put in place um, going forward. Uh, we also have the SABRES testing, uh, which is um, uh, 
uh, social, academic, and emotional behavior screeners that we administer, uh, teachers admi administer, as well as students administer. Um, and these are identifying areas uh, where students may collectively uh, need some additional supports uh, throughout the year. We have social emotional therapy dogs, everybody's favorite, Olive, Oakley, Hattie, Garth, Louie, and others to follow. Um, I'll confess here, I oftentimes let my dog out in the morning. I have treats in my pocket, so whenever I see these, I break all the rules. I give the dogs treats. Um, I apologize in advance. Um, I guess it's not really in advance. I'll apologize after the fact. Uh, South Lyon Police Department, uh, they are present before and after school at our schools that are within uh, the city of South Lyon. Um, it's also not uncommon for them to do walkthroughs. Um, not as much at our elementary school or middle school now because we have the SROs, but at our, at our elementary schools. Uh, the South Lyon Police Department have continued to be wonderful partners uh, with us. Again, their presence uh, in and around our schools um, and anytime we need anything, they also serve on the SAT committee and so very appreciative to them. Uh, we do have three full-time SROs uh, through the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. Uh, we have a unique situation in our district. We have uh, Lyon Township, we have the City of South Lyon, we have Salem, we have uh, Washtenaw County, and we have Livingston County. So um, I may have missed one or said one twice, but you get the idea. We have a lot of jurisdictions within our school district. Um, and we make a point to maintain good communication uh, with each of them. So Mr. Knapp, has excellent relationships with the folks in Washtenaw um, uh, County. Mrs. Cooper has wonderful relations with the folks in Green Oak um, as well as in the others. All of these jurisdictions have contact inf information. We have theirs, they have ours. They have keys to our buildings. They have fobs to our buildings. They have the night lock tool to get to disengage the night lock uh, from outside the classroom. The fire department has access to a Knox box uh, should they need to get into the building uh, with keys. So we work to make sure that our first responders in all these jurisdictions um, have the ability to get to access our buildings and anytime any of them ask for a facility to train and we've let them all know our buildings are available to you in the summertime. if. Uh, if you need to train here or there, we're, we're more than happy to, uh, to have you training in our facilities. Uh, okay, City Hotline. My only comment is here, it would be if anyone using the hotline and if you had need be, I encourage it. But I ask, I would encourage folks to use as much specific, detailed information as possible. Oftentimes we get uh, threats or incidents reported to us through okay to say. Um, they'll contact an administrator or myself at any time of the day or night. Uh, and oftentimes they lack detail for us to really do a thorough review of the incident. And obviously since they're anonymous, we have no ability to follow up with the individual. So again, if you're going to use this uh, avenue to communicate with us an issue of concern, I just encourage folks to use um, as much detail uh, around the incident as possible. These are the thumb locks uh, that exist in, in our building. These are, uh, again, a very simple. You can see the thumb latch. On the left, the door is unlocked. On the right, it's locked. Seems pretty simple, but prior to the installation of this, which I think was in 2015, you had to use your key physically to lock the door. Um, and so you can think in a stressful situation um, how difficult that may, may or may not be and now simply um, as well as maybe from across, across the classroom, I can notice whether my classroom door is locked um, or, or not locked. So um, the district was well ahead on this one. Uh, the night locks, <clears throat> this is a secondary barricade device. Um, we've installed well over a thousand of these uh, throughout the district. There are two different models. They operate the same way. Uh, the model on the left, that's a door that opens outward. Um, and you can see the device when engaged in the second photo there uh, hooks on to the, um, to the door frame. In the center, you'll see that all of them are, are mounted um, 
near the door frame so they're visible from the classroom as well as you can see from the outside that the uh, night lock device is actually in there. And then the one on the left, that's a door that opens in. Um, again, same thing. Um, we'll continue to add these as needed throughout the district. Uh, an annual safety check, this is something that the safety advisory team came up with uh, this year. I think it's been an ex excellent thing for us to do and we'll continue to do. The purpose of it is to familiarize our staff, whether it's in a classroom or an office, with all the safety features within their given classroom, to give them an opportunity to review or to try those things and make sure that they're working, and to report anything that may need service. And so I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to pull it up to give you a quick look, and I promise I won't hit the two and a half hour mark, but I will, um, so, uh, uh, style your text. I prefer not to at this time. Uh, so you, everyone's going to, the staff are going to fill this out. They're going to reference their, their emergency manual. They're going to watch the Alice video and then they're going to comment. In all of our questions, we ask, I have a question regarding this information. We sort these by building and then those questions go back to the, mem to the administrator or to a member of the SAT team. Um, so that if an individual has a question, whatever it is, we want to make sure that we follow up. Um, and so this allows us uh, to do that. Again, here's a, a tutorial on using the night lock device. Wow, using the night lock was really easy. Um, my night lock is not working correctly. I have questions. Again, um, and you may be realizing now I'm not utilizing the universal, the UDL model in this presentation, and I'll work on that for the future. Um, we have them practice the thumb latch. We want to make sure it's working. If it's not, it gets reported so that we can uh, get it repaired. They look at the fire evacuation. They make sure they have their sign. Many of the common ones, tornado, uh, threat by a student. We have them check their uh, emergency go kits. They click on anything that might be missing, and then we work to get uh, those items to them. Um, They practice using the all call, which we talked about earlier. Um, another feature here, uh, by dialing four zeros uh, from a classroom phone or any phone in the district or in that building, it actually rings to all the administrators and secretarial staff. Um, so if there's an issue and they, need, they you know, I'm not, rather than call around six different people, they dial four zeros and then the first one to pick it up fields the call. So that helps expedite it in the case of an emergency. And then lastly, if there are any questions, um, they can put those here. And again, we sort it into a, a spreadsheet by building um, and follow up. So uh, that's something that uh, we implemented and will continue to, uh, uh, to utilize. The school safety grants. Um, last year, you might remember, we applied for a grant to get the uh, school safety, the night locks. It was a little over $100,000 and it was a competitive grant and because we had received a grant previously we were denied the state legislature and the governor put funds into the uh, most recent budget um, in which weren't competitive we had to apply for them but we were pretty much assured them with the exception of one so we received um, 900, over nine hundred seventy nine thousand dollars for safety features we have a subcommittee of SAT that is going through that now with the report, uh, utilizing the report and the resources from SEC to prioritize things um, to spend that money on. The safety and security assessment that we had done at the beginning of the year was uh, covered by a $30,000 grant. And then the implementation of critical incident mapping was covered by a $48,000 grant. So just this year alone, we'll have spent over a million dollars in safety and security related um, measures before uh, before it's all said and done. Um, and I can't thank the legislature enough for not making this competitive and making these funds available to us. We don't know if they're gonna be available on an ongoing basis, uh, but we'll take what we can get and do the best with it. Uh, critical incident mapping, I'll talk very briefly about this and then show you a couple of pictures. Then I'll turn it over to Troy. Uh, this is something that was converted from, uh, that they use in special operations um, when on a mission and it has been converted 
uh, to an application in schools and it is basically taking what can be a very complicated floor map of a school and reducing it to a very simple, very readable format. If you'll note, if you were, would think about it, most first responders responding to a critical incident at a school have never been there before. Uh, some of the experts that we've talked to have said, giving them a map, you might as well not give them anything. You tell them where it's in the art room, it's in the gym room, they, they don't have a clue where it is. They might guess the theater because it's the highest ceiling. Uh, they might guess the gym because it's the next highest ceiling. But again, extremely difficult. Um, so this is actually a process right now. This is just a, a map here you'll see of Abate Senior High School. Um, I, it's a fictitious school. Um, but you can see how busy the map is. And so if in, in an incident, our first responders are trying to communicate with each other using this map on where to go and, and whatnot, very, very difficult. Um, I know Abate Senior High School is working on improving this. Uh, I would recommend, so if you'll see on the left, now they have taken and simplified this, um, and it may be tough to see in this image, but the, the room numbers in the the designations of the cafeteria, the gymnasium, and so forth. What may be hard to see as well is this is put on a grid with the alphabet across the top and the numbers down the side. This will be available electronically as well as hard copy with all of our first responders. And so as people are com coming on scene uh, to an incident, they are all looking at this and it's very easy for them to communicate, you know, park your car in G5, enter door seven, go down the blue hallway you're looking for. So again, it simplifies the communication for our first responders. The map on the right is obviously a similar map, but covering uh, the, larger, uh, the larger footprint. And I'll turn it over to Troy. Thank you, Mr. Archibald. Good evening. Uh, just a quick introduction about myself, Troy Woodwhite from uh, SEC Secure Education Consultants. We're a company based in Grand Rapids, been around about 12 years. Um, I'm a retired chief deputy from Kent County Sheriff's Office, which is Grand Rapids, and joined the SEC team uh, last year. As Mr. Archibald said, uh, back in September, late September, myself and another one of our consultants uh, were here doing site assessments, we call them. And what that is essentially is a vulnerability assessment. Uh, that uh, you know, we, we, we go to a school district to, to see where maybe vulnerability gaps are located in a school or a district. I will say before uh, I kind of go into a little bit more about what the assessment looks like, uh, and I even told Mr. Archibald this uh, when I left the last day I was here, I was thoroughly impressed with the district. I think the district really is taking a proactive approach when it comes to safety and security. And uh, I couldn't, couldn't talk more highly of your administrators and your staff and how accommodating they were for us. Uh, so I do appreciate that. I told, told, told him that a couple different times now. Um, and, uh, but I just want to make sure the board uh, understood uh, where we come from SEC. It was, it was a great uh, privilege to be here uh, doing the site assessments. So part of our assessment process, uh, when we talk about vulnerability assessments, uh, is uh, really a, a couple, couple different uh, stages, so to speak. And the first part is uh, coming into a building or a, a school and talking to one of the administrators and, or, or a group of administrators, a group of employees and staff members. And we get an idea uh, really uh, based on policy, procedure, protocols, rules, kind of what is occurring in a, in a district or specifically the building we're assessing. Uh, just kind of helps, us, helps us with the walkthrough part and a lot of times that takes, it could take about an hour to do the assessment and just have a conversation really about what that looks like for that uh, specific school. The second, really, the second phase of that is the, the walk through or walk around of a building. So we do an interior walk through of a building and really at that point, after we've already talked about procedures, policies, protocols, we're looking at physical security items. And uh, that, you, a lot of times, uh, that takes a, a good amount of time also, uh, but the principal or the AP or dean that walks us around is able to identify uh, some things that, that maybe they have concerns with of the building they want us to see and look at or know, uh, or it's just us um, trying to manage uh, what physical security things that are in place for a district. And then finally, we do an exterior walk of the building, and we look at a variety of things, environmental design things. Uh, it can be anything from 
from parking lot to parking lot lightings to uh, arrival and drop offs, which always seem to be concerns for a lot of schools and a lot of school districts I've been to, uh, to camera placement, uh, speaker placement for public address systems and that sort of thing. So that's kind of really what our assessment looks like. At the, at the end of that, uh, myself and Doug Panning was the other consultant. We compile our reports and we send the district uh, a, a, a initially a draft copy report where we have another conversation with the district. Uh, here's what we found. You had an opportunity to maybe see that. And then we, we finalize that a couple weeks after that. A couple things we look at really when we're, we're here assessing this, when we talk about uh, the assessment process in the physical security, we look at access control, uh, which is mentioned here in the, in the presentation, surveillance cameras, which I already kind of mentioned, but access control is really kind of a big one for districts. Right, we, we, talk, we want to see what the district is doing, what the school is doing for exterior, exterior doors. Are they being locked? Are they being propped open? That sort of thing. Uh, because it, cr it creates, uh, creates a vulnerability when exterior doors are locked, which we all know. But we also want to see what the front entrance looks like. When we talk about access control and hardening our security uh, features of our building, secure vestibules is, is, is a, primary, kind of a primary thing that a lot of districts are going to, uh, over the last few years especially, but even more so now. They're implementing these security vestibules, right? And it, it prevents somebody from walking into your front door of your building and immediately entering into the whole entire school. It, it funnels them into the front office. But, but when we talk about access control and, and the access point uh, of locked doors in the vestibule and how they get in, it's important to realize it's not just the physical part. It is the part of vetting of visitors, vetting of strange visitors and making sure we know who's coming into our building. So that's all part of the access control, but that's sort of the features that we look at. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about um, the report. And we do an executive summary also, which I believe you also had a chance to look at, and that's just a shortened down version kind of, of what we, the full report can be a little overwhelming sometimes when you look at it and the, the different gaps or vulnerabilities that we might identify from procedures to policies, to protocols, to phys physical features, physical security features. Uh, so we kind of narrow that down in executive summary, which kind of helps them. We just kind of, uh, you know, put it in a, in a more of a well-rounded, holistic view of what maybe the, the entire district looks like. Let me talk a little bit about uh, the SAFE program. Uh, so a uh, few months back, it, it's been a, it, was, it was a great honor and privilege to uh, join in a relationship with uh, South Lion. Uh, in, in this program that our company started last year, and it's the SAFE program. And part of the SAFE program is uh, really assigning a consultant. And it just happens to be me. Uh, I was here in the district, but it, uh, it's been a great privilege for me to be part of, part of the SCC uh, and the South Lion team. But part of the SAFE program is kind of that uh, just building a relationship with the district, making sure you have uh, Mr. Archibald, but the district has 24-7 access to a, to a consultant at any time for any reason. Uh, we also uh, are part of the critical incident management system. So, so if there, there was ever a critical incident or an incident that occurred in South Lyon, I'm a phone call away and I can help with uh, helping the district, uh, you know, move through an incident and, and if need be, uh, get more of my consultants here from, uh, from SEC to help, to help with that. And then give some after action help or after, after action review help with that. Um, we also offer some ESCC, which is our online uh, uh, website that uh, schools have uh, access to, South Lyon has access to it, and it just offers some online training for critical incident response to crisis management and a few other, few other resources that we have uh, in that uh, program. And then, uh, you know, part of, the, part of the process of the SAFE uh, program, our SAFE program, is to make sure that the district that we built, uh, come into a relationship with has a uh, safety team, our safety uh, advisory team. And you already had one, so it was great. Uh, and, it's, and it's a robust system. You have all the important people that need to be on there, and it's well-rounded. We added a bunch of additional people. Mr. Archibald did, and I think that's great. So uh, Dave Pass is one of our vice presidents. He and I are both on that team, and we meet with your, your team on a monthly basis. Um, so that's, that's been a, a great opportunity for us also. Lastly, I'll let you talk about the, the training uh, that's forthcoming probably this summer that I'll be conducting myself and probably another one of our consultants. And it's uh, de-escalation training uh, really it provides an, an opportunity for, for us to come in and just assist with uh, staff members and help them de-escalate situations. It's really twofold. 
Uh, it's just de de-escalate a situation, but recognizing nonverbal, some nonverbal warning signs. And it just helps when we talk about access control, it just helps in that process of who's coming into our building. And if someone is in our building, uh, how do we help resolve that? And then tabletop exercises, for those that don't know really what that looks like, it's scenario-based, and the other teams that are gonna be together for that training just work through the process. And we would provide a scenario, they work through a process based on current policy protocols, and uh, we, we then enhance that scenario a little bit and help them through, uh, working through all the way from, from A to Z, uh, offering some feedback to them, but uh, kind of help, helping your team work through the process. And then tabletop exercises can become extremely useful as far as training goes. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. In the de-escalation training, we'll, we'll probably start that with uh, some of our clerical staff as well as administrators. The tabletop exercises will work with administrators, but then that will be training that we can replicate uh, in the buildings um, with the rest of our staff. And then in terms of next steps, we've done two community presentations, or I'm sorry, we've done one. The second one is tomorrow. Uh, last week we um, had a member of our community, actually a parent uh, of ours, uh, works for the Secret Service, uh, and he provided a program over at South Lion High School on internet safety and cyberbullying, and uh, hopefully that was very helpful for those who, who were in attendance. It was an excellent presentation. And then tomorrow night, tomorrow night, uh, also at South Lion High School, we have uh, anxiety, when to worry about uh, your children. And again, this is a session for parents um, to assist their, uh, their children uh, working through times of stress and anxiety and so forth. So uh, that's at 6.30 tomorrow at South Lyon High School, uh, and uh, we hope many will attend. Uh, our critical incident mapping, I talked about that. Uh, we actually just got the first set of proofs back, and so it'll take us some time to, to go through those, but we'll, that's in process. Um, from SEC, uh, we received kind of a priority list based on their reports, and we've established this uh, subcommittee uh, that is use, utilizing our section 97 uh, funds to implement many of these measures uh, things that have happened in 22 23 out of these funds uh, we funded the night locks we've uh, purchased the safe program we purchased per, uh, covering about 40 percent of the cost for the middle school sro um, and we have a raptor pilot that should be starting this spring at pearson and sayer uh, that is a uh, entry uh, system so that we can monitor uh, students coming or parents coming and going making sure that approved individuals are accessing our building or picking up uh, their children and so forth it's in place in other districts in the area with positive results um, and so we're going to pilot that and see how it goes uh, in the fall uh, we're going to because we have these grant funds available uh, because um, you know, we've talked about our budget situation. Uh, we're going to fund about 40% of our overall expenses for the SROs uh, through this grant. Um, we are not going to this year, and I've communicated it with them. As you know, Lyon Township has, has been extremely uh, gracious with, with their funds uh, personally, and we've talked about it as a committee. Uh, I don't feel appropriate to ask them for funds uh, when we have the grant funds available, so we'll give them a year off, but um, again, we'll use that towards the SROs. We're working on developing a quick, quick reference uh, flipbook uh, available in our classrooms and offices for folks who may be less familiar with our procedures. Uh, developing a parent guide that we can share uh, safety-related information with ahead of time for parents. Uh, we'll be looking at adding an additional uh, universal door uh, shades and blinds for, uh, again, for our doors and for side lights. Um, this is uh, beneficial in the event of a, of a lockdown situation. Uh, we've got it, uh, adding some additional mechanisms to further secure uh, classrooms who have a conjoining uh, door. We'll be adding additional surveillance cameras uh, to many of our buildings. Uh, we're looking to purchase some bleed kits uh, um, as well and again this is all tentative our committee is working through this um, but our hope is that all those things will be in place uh, should we move forward with them prior to the start of the 23-24 school year 
Um, and certainly we will continue to provide updates to the board, uh, to our staff, and to the, uh, to the community related to these, uh, to these efforts. So with that, um, and, and uh, Troy and I are available for questions. Seeing none, allowing the proper wait time. We thank everyone here and at home for your attention. I so quickly want to thank SEC um, for the work that you're doing. We we're, had the good fortune of having you here, and we're getting to work with you in Livonia as well. So I've seen a, a lot of, of, uh, of you guys, and, and I'll say the, the professionalism, the expertise, the attention to detail, um, what what the service you provide is is unlike anything I've seen before and just having the comfort of knowing that people are going through our entire district in 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 great detail um, to let us know both what we're doing well and what we need to do better is is a really a big deal and I know that you know the school safety is on the minds of everybody on the board everybody in the district we've definitely heard from the community uh, again and again about you know wanting assurance that when they entrust their students to us that they indeed will be safe so I appreciate you mr. Archibald um, uh, in, in initiating all of this and we appreciate the work that you're doing as well. Um, it's a big deal.